One, two, three. Hey, ooh, say what, say what, say what. You know that I like you, baby. I can't be too loud because I'm in a hotel in Florence, Italy right now. So, um, that just lets y'all know that I'm working. You know, I'm, I'm on vacation right now. I literally slept for 25 hours um, because of jet lag, one, and because, like, your girl been working and she's tired. But y'all, you know, it's Sunday, so I have to come at y'all with a brand new Say What's Sunday video. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Number one, let's talk about this Taylor Swift uh, Angelica Pickles um, situation. Taylor Swift has a new song out right now called Look What You Made Me Do. Still looking for what we made her do. She released the visuals like and teaser for her new song, Look What You Made Me Do. I listened to the whole thing, I wasn't impressed, and you know, I tweeted earlier, I was like, I feel like this album is gonna have a lot of like, R&B influences, because usually, when white artists decide that they wanna be edgy, and you know, in all honesty, Taylor Swift is as edgy as, you know, a teaspoon. They tend to do a lot of, you know, songs with R&B influences on them, so I'm not gonna be surprised uh, on this new album if she has a song featuring Genuine, and it's about, you know, having sex, with socks on, I don't know, whatever. I was gonna say that it was almost as bad as that Swish Swish song, but I like the Swish Swish song by Katy Perry because it's got like a, some, like a, it's got a, like a, like a vibey little gay beat. Um, I saw the music video though, the music video was weird. Katy Perry, you're trying really hard to be Missy Elliott, but you're not innovative, you're just a weird girl. For all the T-Swift fans, there's, your girl is back, and for the rest of us, content. LeBron Cox and Beyonce are working on a secret project. So nobody knows what the collaboration is about. I'm assuming that it's going to be something that's going to uplift the trans community in some type of way. Um, because she did hashtag in her tweets something like trans lives matter, something to that effect. So I'm here for it. I mean, if Beyonce is going to go out and start uh, plucking out people who have been standing for her for damn their, their entire lives to work with that, to work with her, I'm here for it. Parkwood, I'll literally drop everything. I'll quit my job. I'll even break up with Vanessa. Like, I'll do whatever you want me to do, and then I will come work with you. More details on this is going to come out on September 6th. That's the date that Laverne has given us. So on September 6th, we will see what happens with that. Mac is doing a new collaboration with Aaliyah or an Aaliyah-inspired line of cosmetics. So all you Instagram vampy girls who love to put on your looks and go viral on, on Twitter and Instagram, this one's for you. The family is on board with this project, unlike these, you know, fraudulent, fake biopics that, you know, y'all want to make about Aaliyah's life so bad that you want to cast, um, like, the Olsen twins for, you know, to play Aaliyah and cast fucking, like, Karuchi to play Missy Elliott. The family is actually on board with this. There is actually a petition that went out, uh, I'm not sure how long ago, but the petition went out be after the success of their Selena collaboration to do one with Aaliyah so that this is now, you know, happening because of that. So yay for the makeup community, yay for anyone that knows how to do contours, things like that. I I can barely contour a damn thought, let alone my, my own cheeks, so. All right, now time to get into Baller Wives. Are you guys watching? I hope that you guys are watching. Comes on only on VH1 Mondays at 9 p.m. I watched episode two last night, and these are my thoughts. You got a whole lot of Miko this episode. Miko is basically the Carly Red of the show. She's the old one, the one who's just the instigator, the one who's just always all up, all up in other people's business is trying to start stuff um, basically out of, with nothing. So they start to go into one of the, one of Miko's storylines, which is her getting fired from a radio station um, that, where she used to work with one of the other wives' husbands now now she's saying that it's the husband's doing uh as to why she got fired but here's the thing about that that happened two years ago and this girl is convinced now i granted i don't know her don't want to but i'm i just i really don't think that over two years time that this man and this woman uh his wife are still going around talking about how this girl got fired or talking down on her name this that and the third because the husband he didn't even really seem to care and miko's husband looks like her son so that was just a weird little situation altogether so kahifa michael vick's wife she's pregnant and she is having some complications with the pregnancy. She's saying, the doctor was saying that she could die, the baby could die, so we're gonna see what happens with that. Um, she was saying that her uterus, 
her uterus had to get, um, what did they say? They had to stitch it up or something? I don't know. They talked about how they had to stitch up her uterus or something crazy like that. Oh, Aja. Okay, so you also got a lot of Aja. I fuck with Aja. I like so out of the seat out of the show so far, the two that I really mess with are Aja and um Geneva. Because even though Geneva was talking crazy about how Stacey had like messed with her man in the back of a car and the back of a Ford, um, I don't know nothing about that, but um even though she was talking crazy about that, I mess with Geneva because she seems like she has common sense, which is something that a lot of these girls, a lot of these wives of ballers and wives of, of you know, basketball players or whatever, like a lot of them seem to lack. So I like Geneva and I like Aja for those reasons. Now, speaking of Aja, Aja and Miko have history because Aja's husband is the one who she, who, who Miko is saying got her fired from her job whole last two years ago. Miko basically starts talking down on Aja's husband and her child. Miko, I'm getting crazy vibes from her because she has real ass conversations with her son and she tries to convince everybody that her son is is so wise for his age, which, you know, I'm sure he is. I'm sure that he's a very smart boy. But girl, you're 40 something, maybe 50 something years old. Your husband looks like he's your son's brother. So I don't think that you are, it's the best idea to be having these deep ass conversations with your son about this woman that you don't get along with who happens to be the mother of one of his school friends. And then she was talking about how her son got in a fight with Aja's son. It was a lot. A lot happened. I just, I'm ready for fights. And I know that it's bad to like pin women against each other, black women against each other, but I mean, those be the best fights. So I don't really know. Like I'm stuck between a sew-in and a bad lip injection. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But I hope you guys are watching. Make sure that you come back every single Sunday. We're gonna do a little recap on Ball of Wives every single Sunday here on Say What Sunday. Make sure that you guys are watching Mondays at 9 p.m. only on VH1 for that. And yeah, that's it for me. I will see you guys next week in another Say What Sunday video. I hope that you guys liked it. I'm gonna go enjoy these Florence, um, these Florence pigeons who are just very confident. Um, but I'll see y'all later. Bye.